I've already been very like hoppy in my adult life. I was a software engineer. Mm -hmm. I ended up going remote and that kind of gave me the freedom to bounce around and move to different locations. So I already had that uh, like sense of moving isn't a big deal. A lot of things aren't permanent. Mm -hmm. You know, if you move somewhere, you can move back you can start pursuing something without completely getting rid of the thing you were doing before. Mm. Uh, I was a software engineer and then I quit to pursue acrobatics. It wasn't cold turkey. Mm. I had been, you know, I've done acrobatics my whole life and I had even started like taking up gigs before I quit my job. I'm quitting one thing and getting rid of something and then starting a brand new scary mm. thing. I was already integrated. Ease yourself into it. You can try it out without full stop what you're doing and, and pursuing it. You can you can dip your toe in. So even if it's something you just like where, uh, it's something I enjoy, but it's not a huge passion of mine. Mm -hmm. um, it makes the rest of your life so worth it. And you really can, like, I don't find fulfillment in it. Mm -hmm. I, um, but because of the lifestyle it gives me, I can find fulfillment elsewhere. All right, let's talk about your your injury, right? Clearly this is your, your, your probably biggest one. Um, so how do you deal with it mentally when it first happened? Let's see, when it first happened, um... All right, welcome to another episode of the Myokinetic Podcast. Today we have a new guest coming on. She's so much fun, so awesome, and she's just going through her ACL rehab with us right now. But what I love the most is like her approach, uh, how lighthearted she is going through something like this, especially going back to doing the things that you know she loved, you know, especially with doing some cool trampoline stuff. So she can explain that in the podcast. So I want you guys to um, get a listen to to Nicole Vokalopoulos. I didn't mess that up, right? Close enough. Close enough. Well, Nicole, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, um, thank you so much. So first and foremost, um, I just, I'm, I'm really excited to have you on just because you do so many fun stuff and you stay active the whole time. And you also have the longest commute. Now you have set the, the milestone for people uh, when it comes to distance and time to come see us, especially coming from Vegas and commuting from New York City to come see us. So awesome. Good, good job for you on investing in yourself. <laughs> uh, it's, it's worth it. Like if I have time uh, to come here and help my ACL, that's like where I want to put my time. Awesome. So yeah, let's uh, give the listener a little bit of background about you, um, you know, who you are. I, I mean, you told me about your, your upbringing and all that stuff. So let's talk about that and how it kind of, put you to where you are right now doing all the fun things uh yeah where exactly should i start uh well let's start with the sheer background i think that's a good one yeah uh so uh i'm uh i started as a vice parents would be in gymnastics very young at mm -hmm. like three or four uh and i did gymnastics until uh i was a teenager and then i kind of hopped back and forth between cheerleading and gymnastics Okay. Uh, and from there, uh, I went to college and I did one year of uh, college cheer at UT Austin. Okay. Um, but it, it wasn't working out for me as it wasn't um, the main focus of UT cheer at the time wasn't as a sport. It was like to be an ambassador mm. of the school. Um, and I was recovering from a different injury and the two together, uh, like I was not getting what I wanted out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then I switched to like club gymnastics. Uh, and from there, uh, after college and during college, I guess, I started bouncing around to just different acrobatic disciplines. So I took up tricking, which is like gymnastics, but with kicks involved and a lot of things off of one leg. Mm -hmm. uh, and then every place I moved to or every gym I went to kind of added different uh disciplines into the mix so tricking and then like i would go back to cheer but then i also took up trick lining i took up um some like fitness pole dancing i took up um like trampoline and then i found tramp wall which is what most recently i've been uh the most into i kind of call it the the current like circus love of my life okay uh and uh, I've kind of always bounced between all of these, uh, depending on my like surroundings, who I'm with, the community, uh, like what I want to do. Um, and then most recently, actually, with my injury, I've taken up trapeze because I don't really need my uh, knee for that. Yeah. yeah. So, but the the end goal is to go on 
some sort of Cirque du Soleil, correct? Yeah, yeah, not not exactly Cirque du Soleil, um, but it's just to explore the performing space at a mm. high acrobatic level. Um, and Cirque could definitely be uh, one of the shows I'd like to get on. Um, mm. But I'm still very much in like the exploratory phase as I just started performing um, less than a year ago. Mm. So I had about uh, six or seven months of performing before I got injured. Okay. Um, and so I want to continue, uh, yeah, exploring that. Can you break it down to like people who are listening? Like, what does that mean? Like the, the, the high performing realm? Yeah. Like uh, I'm, you know, I'm still figuring it out myself. I'm very new to, uh, like the circus community, mm -hmm. uh, cause most of the performing I'm doing is within that. Mm -hmm. Um, though I also have pursued stunts for movies before oh, yeah. um and i'm uh i'd say passively pursuing that mm -hmm. now uh, it's kind of always out there and i i have done it before um but for circus high level performance um uh how would i explain it um i think it's just performances that both have like high level skills mm -hmm. in whatever discipline. So for me right now, I am pushing tramp wall, mm -hmm. um, but they also have like a high level of production surrounding it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would be maybe like the key difference of what I'm going for versus what I've already done. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the past I've done mostly like amusement parks and they've been really good for me to progress my skills, progress my, uh, progress my performance experience mm -hmm. and, um, kind of like ability of like being able to interact with the crowd or look at the crowd even uh, because uh, I, I can get very shy, like being in front of a bunch of people like that. Um, and so I've done like more amusement parks and they have been great, but they've been more um, uh, less of a production. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them have been more like sometimes they've been a show, um, but they've been maybe um, just less um bells and whistles it's kind of like um maybe more more flexible mm -hmm. and uh like less put into the production value of it mm -hmm. um whereas like i would like to like for cirque cirque has like you know choreographers and costume designers mm -hmm. and a lot of things have to come together to make that production as well as the high level skills and things have to be more precise and the the pressure is on um because it's like you're expected to be at that high level mm -hmm. and you're expected to be at that high level like consistently yeah um and that's something that i haven't uh gotten to yet and and that's something that um that i am pushing for um so something like cirque um and uh there are other ones there's some like companies in Europe that mm -hmm. have high level productions. They kind of are scattered around pretty randomly that if you weren't in the circus world, you might think I've never even seen tramp wall before. Um, and it is kind of niche, but it pops up a little bit more than you think it would. Yeah. I think on the cruise I'm going at the end of next month, they have some sort of circuit performance, like almost every day. Yeah, so actually cool. a lot of uh, cruises do. And a lot of, uh, I know a couple cruises that have, a tramp wall uh, except their tramp wall is more like uh usually tramp wall is like a trampoline and a wall mm -hmm. and the wall is like a full wall um but a lot of time on cruises there's no wall it's just the deck mm. so you would like jump off the deck onto the trampoline and back up onto the deck mm. and then there's nothing there oh yeah so that's uh, different yeah, I've never done that. That sounds really scary. <laughs> yeah. I've also been very spoiled with the like tramp walls I've been on and I've only been on really nice ones. Okay. So I want to ask you this, right? So obviously we work with a lot of female athletes and we always like, like to talk to them about performing anxiety and all of that stuff. Clearly what you do is high risk, high reward uh, at the same time. How do you position yourself and what are some advice you can give to the audience, to the listener of how to deal with that? butterfly in the stomachs and all of that stuff? Um, my approach to it is, so I have felt that pressure and anxiety actually the most with when I did competitive cheer mm. um, because that was so precise. And there was like, uh, since it's such a team, this coordinated sport, if you make a mistake, you can't kind of like make up for it on your own. You mm -hmm. just can't make a mistake. Um, and so, and then if you do, you let the team down and you're getting scored and it's like a one and done type thing. So 
that is what I've felt the most pressure on. I I try to not think about it. I like um, I try to dance it out. I try to just continue moving as if I'm at practice. I try mm. to not let myself get stiff. Um, you know, and I try not to conserve too much energy because then I just get tired and cold. So I, I try to dance around. I get the jitters out. Um, I've also like I'll do some breathing. Uh, I've started meditating in this past year, uh, and that can really help just ground me and mm. make sure my breathing is good. Um, but uh, I, I'd say a big one to, for anxiety is to prepare mm. as well. Like there's only so much you can do the moment before. Mm -hmm. So if you've prepared and you've trust your preparation, if you've gone into your practices or whatever you're doing uh, and, and you know that you can, you can hit it, it, it's so much easier to, to like trust yourself mm -hmm. than if you've maybe like slacked on that preparation or like haven't like I go into my preparation thinking like how is this going to be on stage or during the competition um to try to like feel uh that confidence whenever I'm going out mm -hmm. can you segue into your routine because I know you obviously you do a lot uh and the people listening to this like I, I had a friend in high school I think I mentioned to you he went up to Canada for a circuit slay school and I remember talking to him after we graduated high school he would practice handstand for like three hours nonstop. And then on top of that, it's like stretching routine and all of that. So like, what's your routine? Um, so yeah, I mean, my, I'm really bad at routine in general. I'm mm. a very, um, uh, I like a lot of chaos in my <laughs> life. Okay. Um, so, but, uh, I do, I kind of have more of an integration into my life. Okay. Um, rather than like specific routines and especially now like with with this acl injury and recovery process it's a little different than it usually would be um but i'm very like i kind of stretch throughout the day constantly mm. like i don't really have a time i like if, if i'm going to train i will stretch i do i incorporate a lot of yoga poses i don't necessarily do yoga but there's a lot of yoga poses that i like and uh like get the spots for me that mm -hmm. get very tight. Um, but I really do them throughout the day. Okay. Like if I'm sitting down watching TV, I'll just randomly get up and kind of stretch out where I feel tight. Or if I'm on the subway or the train, I'll stretch there. I I have no shame in where I am. I will stretch anywhere. Um, and not like anything crazy, but just like stretching out my quads. Um, so that's kind of pretty integrated into my life. Um, and then uh, just work out. Like I supplement my acrobatic training with uh, working out three to four times a week. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm a very big, not routine person, but I like to listen mm -hmm. to my body as well. Um, and so I kind of, it ends up being three to four times a week of, of like I'll do, I did knees over toes back before I was injured um, and uh, some, some, just like supplemental arm stuff as well, uh, okay. but very bad at routine. Um, but uh, I just try to make sure to get things done. Yeah, but I feel like it, it, it might not be a set schedule routine, but you are doing the work throughout the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So exactly. there's certain checklists that you do have in your head, like, mm -hmm. hey, let me get some stretching, let me do get some lifting in, you know, then let me go train and all of that stuff. Yeah, and I actually do a lot of um, another part of I guess my routine then is uh, I do a lot of PT in general. Mm -hmm. Um, or like both PT and like preventative PT mm -hmm. almost. Um, I've had some shoulder injuries and I will a couple times a week, a lot of times when I wake up in the morning is when I usually do them. I'll just do a bunch of things with bands. I'll do mm -hmm. like the wall slides. I'll do these different. All the arm care stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like get the like correct shoulder activation type thing. I'll do that a lot. And then I usually throw in at the end of my workouts, um, ankle and knee mm -hmm. preventative therapy as well, where like I'll do a lot of like balancing on BOSU balls on one leg with my eyes closed and the bands with the hip stuff, all the, the stuff that's, you know, I, it's honestly super boring to do, but it's so helpful. Like I really notice whenever I don't do that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's also just thrown in. Oops. Um, that's also thrown in a couple times a week at least. Yeah. Listen, we always emphasize the boring stuff because the boring yeah. stuff is stuff that works all the time mm -hmm. and all the fancy stuff doesn't really give you the best return. Right. And one thing I, I want to shift gear and, and talk to you more about, because obviously you relocate from the city to Vegas to pursue, you know, tr your training. So 
were you always like that? You were like to just like, if you're into something, you're just always pursuing it. Or like, how do you, how do you give yourself permission that like, cause I feel like the, the, the new generation, the younger generation now is like, they're so tentative in pursuing the things that they want. And they kind of, you know, I, I don't want to say they, they kind of play uh, and watch it at a sideline rather than being, you know, um, a protagonist they own in their own story. Yeah. I mean, I think for, so I've already been very like hoppy in my mm. adult life. I've moved, um, with COVID, I ended up going remote for, I was a software engineer. Mm. I ended up going remote and that kind of gave me the freedom to bounce around and move to different locations. Mm. So I already had that, uh, like sense of moving isn't a big deal mm. anymore. Um, but I think with a lot of things, it's like, um, one, a lot of things aren't permanent. Mm -hmm. You know, if you move somewhere, you can move back. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of times, you know, it, it can be a hassle. Or you you need the financial resources mm -hmm. or uh, like there's logistics involved. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But things are, I think, less permanent maybe than people think. Or also like you can start pursuing something without completely getting rid of the thing you were doing before. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. for me, like. Uh, I was a software engineer and then I quit to pursue acrobatics. It wasn't cold turkey. Mm. I had been, you know, I've done acrobatics my whole life and I had even started like taking up gigs before I quit my job. Mm. Um, and I had integrated myself into the circus community. And so I, it wasn't this like, I'm quitting one thing and getting rid of something and then starting a brand new scary mm. thing. I was already integrated. And I think there are like, I think those are the two maybe main things. It's one like you can you can undo things yeah. you can you can move back if you move to vegas and you hated it you can move back to new york um in in most cases mm -hmm. um and um and and i also under understand that like you know maybe you have to you have to work things out with jobs mm -hmm. i've been fortunate as a software engineer we have a very lax lifestyle mm -hmm. which has been very helpful um or flexible work work balance um so but still things aren't permanent and, um, yeah, ease yourself into it. You can try it out without full stop what you're doing and, and pursuing it. You can, you can dip your toe in. Mm -hmm. So with, uh, with Ashley, with your career as software engineer, is that like a, is it, is there a lot of female in that space or is it mostly male when it comes to software engineer and how do you, how do you end up there? <laughs> Um, I think I got kind of lucky. I had done, uh, like I had slight coding experience from my days as a child on the internet and Neopets. And so I was slightly exposed to it. And then I just took an AP computer science class in high school. And because I had that little bit of exposure, mm -hmm. I was like ahead of the class. So I felt good about it. Okay. Um, and then I just chose it as, uh, I just chose it as my college major. Uh, and it ended up being something, um, that I liked enough and had great job opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got really lucky with that. And uh, the tech space is is just a really like uh, um, flexible and in high demand. So mm -hmm. it, it treats us really well, uh, but it kind of just worked out that way. And it worked out like I got, I got very, I'd say uh, lucky with that was something I liked and just ended up pursuing and it led to such good career paths. Mm -hmm. So what would your self pitch be if you were to tell students who are in high school now that are thinking about going to software engineering? Um, the self pitch is that, uh, one, it's a great tool no matter what field you're in. It can be helpful for finance, for science, for, uh, I'm sure, like marketing. Like you, you use it in Excel. You can use it to automate your gmail messages mm -hmm. um so it's such a useful tool and no matter what you do and everyone can use it um and then um i think the jobs kind of sell themselves um the market isn't quite as good as it used to be mm -hmm. especially with chat gpt and just some like uh i think some uh drawback from mm -hmm. the tech market um but there's still a lot of great jobs out there and they're all pretty remote and they're all pretty flexible they treat you pretty well um, uh, so even if it's something you just like where, uh, it's something I enjoy, but it's not a huge passion of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, it makes the rest of your life so worth it. And you really can, like, I don't find fulfillment in it. Mm -hmm. I, um, but because of the lifestyle it gives me, I can find fulfillment elsewhere. That's great. I think that's, yeah. that's, that's a good thing. Cause, um, 
like I'm, I'm always saying like I'm fortunate enough to like really enjoy what I do. So to me, like work feel like play, but, and I also understand that not many people have that opportunity. Right. But I think the way you balancing it out is really cool. It's like, yeah, all right. I have this responsibility. I, I still got to go up, show up, do my job. But then I have that flexibility that I can go and pursue all these other things. Right. Cause at this point you're kind of pursuing something you've been doing your whole life and then turn into a hobby. And then now you get to kind of turn pro and then try to pursue it in, into the next level. And I think the great thing is that if whenever you want to hang it up or like do less of it, you can be like, all right, well, I at least I have something to fall back on. Yeah. That's all. That was also very helpful uh, to in like making the switch over was like, I can, I can go back to tech. It's, it's going to be there. Um, and so I'm on the job hunt now for tech jobs. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, yeah, we, we talk about it. So <laughs> yeah, but um, I would say the, the drawback to tech is uh, I think I've mentioned this before is uh, a lack of trampolines in the workplace. <laughs> yeah. I get a lot more of that nowadays. <laughs> Um, so, all right, let's talk about your, your injury, right? Clearly this is your, your, your probably biggest one. Um, so how do you deal with it mentally when it first happened? <sighs> let's see when it first happened. Um, I mean, it was tough. It's, it, it's, I went like I was in, I had just moved to Vegas to train like hardcore train to get better, um, to just push everything circus related and uh about a month in did this uh and it was pretty it was pretty tough um the first few weeks was really just getting through it and uh trying i, I was kind of scrambling to try to find things to make up for it it's like mm -hmm. oh i'm gonna learn to juggle so in the first like two weeks i learned to juggle because mm -hmm. I, I was trying to make up in skills for what i was what i was lacking um, I decided pretty early on as well that I, I was going to try to get back into tech um, because I think the main thing for me, what I wanted to do to cope with this was to have something else in its place. So it's it's kind of put a put a stop to this path of me getting good at tramp wall specifically and other things like that. So what can I put in my life that wouldn't have happened that will still further me or like I, I'll still be happy about um, rather than just sitting there. So I decided early on that I wanted to pursue a tech job. I did not pursue it early on though, cause I was really low energy mm -hmm. and I, I just couldn't, uh, I didn't have the motivation to mm -hmm. like start studying for interviews and reaching out. Um, but it was, I was really trying to find what would make me happy mm -hmm. during the injury and what would make me happy coming out of it. So those mm. are the two things. And it took a while to find that the first few weeks, especially like I would just kind of cry mm. randomly um, as, a, as an upsetting thing. It's like upsetting. It's scary. It's a long process. Um, after surgery, I think also I, I'd never had a big surgery like this before. Mm. So I was also like scared of that. Um, and uh, I will say like my mindset was or like my emotions were a lot better once the surgery was over and I could actually progress mm -hmm. and I didn't have this thing looming over my head. Um, and I think that but uh, yeah, that's what I've continued in my mindset is just how do I enjoy myself and then how do I come out of this not like being being happy this happened almost being like mm -hmm. well this happened but now i'm here or now i've done this now i've made this new friend even or um had this experience which i wouldn't have had otherwise um without this uh injury i don't think i would have made it to my cousin's wedding mm -hmm. um i'm greek and my cousins are greek and they had uh their sisters they both had back-to-back -back weddings a few weeks ago in greece um and i would have been on contract and i wouldn't have made their weddings but mm -hmm. i got to go to their weddings and like it was, I got so much closer with them. I got so much closer to my Greek roots and I had a mm. fantastic time. Um, and that's something that like, I can be happy about that that happened. Yeah. So that's what I've been looking for. And like, uh, it was a slower, slower process than I think I originally wanted it to be, but, uh, I, we're making it through. Yeah. I think that's a good way to look at the silver lining. Um, and I think I love that you bring that up because every time, when we work with someone who got like, you know, season ending injuries, like the ACL, where I was like, Hey, now this is the time we actually get to find out a little bit more about yourself. Right. Rather than as you being so focused on either your sport, what you're trying to pursue, you get to actually pursue like your interests. Like what else are you doing? Like we have like girls who just like taking up baking and become like a great baker. And then like they start exploring different things, which makes me so happy because you know, you, you come in one way, 
and you're kind of one dimensional. And then with the injury, what you actually turn out to be developed to be like a, a whole entire different person. And you get to unlock different things that you might not even know about yourself because you didn't have the time. I think the best thing that the injury does give people is they give their time back in some way. Because, I mean, your practice was what? Like how many hours per day? Uh, yeah, I mean, at least like three to six hours. And it was always on my mind. Yeah. So I think it's good that you're able to, you know, I, I, I love the fact that you, it, it's kind of like the game of like Tetris, right? Like you, you have to find things that fit in a certain piece and that piece is no longer mm -hmm. there. And you fill it out with um, things that, you know, would, would, you know, A, give you happiness and fulfillment, but also farther your, your skill. So I think it's always good. And the saying, the, the saying is so true. Like, you know, the, the idle mind is the devil's playground, right? Because you can always pursue different things that is not good for you. Um, yeah, so that I, I, I always appreciate when I see like people with different growth. Um, what is something that you learned about yourself since this injury? Hmm. Um, something I've learned about myself since this injury. I, that's not something I've thought about yet. <laughs> I'm just such a go, go, go. No, person. Right. Well, that's, that's why I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> Um, something I've learned about myself with this injury. Um, I think maybe I have more patience than I, than I originally thought. Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe it's because it's been forced patience. Um, but I, I think I've been pretty good about like not pushing my leg and um, like really staying within bounds of what I think is safe. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't think I would have expected that from myself. Um, I kind of, I think I would have expected me to push it and maybe risk it a little bit. Um, but maybe, maybe it's just cause I'm so scared of, of hurting it or, or hindering progress because even though this like 10 months, six to 10 to 12 months, it's awful it sounds even more awful to have to restart. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I think, yeah, I've, I've had more patience. It's also shown me that I, I can sit around and do nothing for two months. Um, I've never had a period of my life like that. Like I'm, I'm very go, go, go. I think even when talking, I'm, I, I speak so quickly and that's kind of how my life is and how I like it to be. Um, but it kind of showed that I can get through, periods of time where, where there's less going on, mm -hmm. where I feel like I am just existing more and, uh, waiting or having patience. Uh, so it maybe kind of showed me that side of me that mm -hmm. I actually don't have to be doing something constantly chaotically all over the place. Um, and that, uh, I don't think I'd want it for the long term, but it's okay to have, have those periods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I I think it's, I think it's good because you you made some time coming back, see some friends, and I I love that you shared that you went to your cousin's wedding, you know, get some traveling in, all that stuff. Um, so, uh, this is just a fun question. So uh, you mentioned in the past that you used to do stunt. So if you have to pick an actress, a dream actress that you can do a stunt double for, who would it be? Oh, a dream actress? I mean, I've got a dream movie, which is The Matrix. Okay. So, oh, wow. yeah, nice. The Matrix would be so cool. Like, I will have- So Trinity? All, I guess Trinity, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, Neo, but I, I don't know. I don't think I'm the stature for that. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, like, kind of kid size for stunts. <laughs> size. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really like those uh, kind of, like- uh, it's like human abilities, but just like expanded a little bit. Mm -hmm. Those are like my favorite. Like those are the stunts I want to do. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'd say the Matrix. And then um, every time I think of like an actress I would want to do a, a stunt for, it's like I I don't think about it with a free mind. I think about it like in terms of who I could actually play. Mm -hmm. um, and it ends up being a lot of children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm small. Like, like who? Uh, I didn't know. I think I thought about like, um, uh, like the Kim Possible movie because I loved Kim, Kim Possible. Po oh, well, wow. I loved Kim Possible back. growing up. She's yeah. she was probably a little bit my role model. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I ever like consciously knew that, but subconsciously, I always looked. That up was to Cartoon her. Network days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
um, just, just, I guess, yeah, Keanu Reeves is my answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So maybe the next John Wick. <laughs> yeah, that would be really cool too. My um, stunt mentor and martial art instructor has has done a bunch of work on those John Wick movies, which is really cool. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. I, I loved you bring The Matrix, I thought, was a movie that was way ahead of his time when it first came out. I rewatched it again like last year. I'm like, man, this movie's so deep. Like the first one. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up watching them. So I've got so many factors I love about it. Yeah. Do you think it was a good trilogy? Do you think that the last one was, was a good? Um, I'm I'm blinded by nostalgia. Yeah. And so, yes, my answer is yes. I didn't I think see the new great. one. I refuse to see oh, the new one. Oh, the new one, uh, it was fun, uh, but it, it didn't carry the same like weight as all the old Matrix yeah. movies. Uh, but I loved the trilogy. Yeah. The ending... I love the end. I love it all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The second one to me has like the best fight scene. Like I that car, the that really car chase scene yep. is so cool. With the twins? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, all right. Yeah. We can nerd out on movies all the time. Um, so when you were preparing for a different stunt role and stuff, like what's the preparation like to do that? Do you have to study the character and also the movement pattern of the actor slash actress that you're going to be? Um, so with stunts as well, I'm kind of in that beginning phase where mm -hmm. I've only done a little bit. I've done a lot of training, um, and I've trained with a bunch of different people around, like around the United States doing a bunch of different things. Um, but I've only had one real role. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, it's not out yet. I actually don't know, like the, the like rules about what you're supposed to say. Uh, but just be as vague <laughs> as possible. I, I, yeah. Um, uh, I didn't really know what it was ahead of time. Like they gave me like a script, but they didn't. And it was like two pages of a script. I mean, like not so much of it. And they didn't tell me what the, the fight or the choreography was going to be. Um, they said that they ended up cutting it actually because mm -hmm. of time. Like they didn't have time to film it all. And mm -hmm. they like, they, uh, took out like they watered down the stunts a lot so it was supposed to be this like crazy fight scene with like knives and me killing a bunch of people Whoa. yeah and then it ended up to ended up me just like throwing a knife through some flames uh i had a line or two and then like running uh out of the way of some fire uh, that like uh, of some gunshots real fires no uh they were like sparks so they would like fire and they would actually like explode on on impact uh, oh. they weren't being shot at us okay. uh, but just like around to like make sparks fly um uh and the preparation for that for me was i mean once again it was just in my training and uh like making sure that when i was going into it that um like i had been training for years for stunt choreo like i do martial arts as well mm -hmm. so training in like stunt choreography and and like both you know stunt choreography both is it's it's like a dance it's mm -hmm. like you have to be able to learn the choreography which is a skill and then you have to be able to do the choreography which is its own skill as well mm -hmm. so um just practicing both of those a lot was the main preparation um i think for a lot of stunt performers and or some performing is actually uh, like the extras you see that get shot. That's mm -hmm. when you're not doubling somebody. Stunt doubling is when you're actually like taking over the role as like one of those characters where you're becoming somebody else. Wow. Um, and for that, um, these are from what I want to like, yeah, I'm not super experienced in this, mm -hmm. um, but from what I hear from people and my mentor um, is that, uh, yeah, like you, you will practice how they move. Like there are times if you're playing like an older character with a limp, like you might have to emulate that walk mm -hmm. and use that in your doubling. Um, but I've never had to do that yet. No, that's, I mean, that's fascinating. Like I didn't think I, it just came through my head. It's kind of like your timing got to be on point with the choreography and then yeah. It's acting. Yeah. As well. It's yeah, it's stunt acting. It's acting but through fights. It's um you you still need to have that like display of like if you get shot, your face is gonna do something. Yeah. You're gonna have an emotion. Um what's so what's the hardest thing you have done so far? Like sport wise or in in, in in your entirety up to this point? Like the hardest place like to get to or the hardest as Skill like physical set, thing? Physical thing. Um I think, I think, uh, I mean, martial arts one, I think is the hardest physical workout, just like every single bit of your body is exerted. Um, mm -hmm. and then like stunt falls, um, can be 
Like you're beating yourself up. You're just trying to like minimize the amount of beat up you're doing to yourself. Mm -hmm. So I would say like stunts is physically the hardest, like those falls. Um, for skill wise, um, uh, I don't know. I've <laughs> for skill wise as well. Um, I only had just started Bonkeen, mm -hmm. um, which is like a cheer basket. It's like two guys under you and they throw you in the air and then they catch you. Mm. I'd only started that um, before I hurt myself, but kind of all of my pr prior acrobatic experience, like all came to a head and I just was like very suited for it. And I was doing pretty high level skills for, for Bonkeen already, um, which is something that I also can't like want to get back to so badly. Yeah. I, I would imagine with your background in cheer, that definitely helped. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like just as I'm listening to you talk about your journey, it's like you just don't know which skill set in life is gonna prepare you for your future, right? If you did, you haven't done cheer, then that wouldn't come to you as easy, mm -hmm. right? Tram Tramwell would not be for you as easy. It's kind of remind me of um, you remember that movie Slumdog Millionaire? Yeah, yeah. So I that's how I like to view life, where like you go through like some really hard stuff, and then. You just don't know the lesson from those hard things, how it's going to show up for you in your future in the time that you actually need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I love thinking like that. And I, I very much agree with it. It's like I've learned this random skill to juggle and then maybe one day they just need juggling on set or even just like you're at a party and you start to juggle and then you make a new friend. Like yeah. they're, they all the way it all ties together and makes you you or like will be useful in some case could mm -hmm. always be pretty funny it's i think even more likely with stunts because every single thing i ever learn for my for stunts i can just put on my stunt resume so yeah. it's kind of funny where it's like well i learned this somewhat pointless <laughs> skill but i'll just plop it on here and it feels like i did it for something yeah um no i mean working with you has been so fun because it's got me to think so much outside the box right and yeah we we work with like a lot of high level athletes but just on, on our first day working together, like we have to go through like your Instagram. See, like, can you tell me exactly what you're going back to so we can kind of work backwards to get you back there? I also <laughs> like, I kind of like doing a lot of everything. Yeah. Um, So yeah, it's kind of hard to say like one thing because I also like randomly want to really rollerblade yeah. um, and like kiteboard. It's just kind of, uh, yeah. But that's the whole thing, right? You, you want your body to be physically prepared enough so you can do those things. Mm -hmm. So Speaking of which, what are your biggest advice uh, when it comes to recovery and making sure your body is prepared, whether to do stun, whether to do, you know, tramp wall, whether to do, you know, juggling, whatever it is. What What is your biggest advice to make sure your body stay on tip top shape, that you can handle things that come your way? Um, I think it's, I think my advice would be like maintenance. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, as you especially like as you get older and older like any maintenance you haven't done in the past will just compound and so i think it's stretching i've started i did i've started hot yoga the past few years and doing hot yoga i like my whole body always feels so much better like all the muscles feel so much more relaxed or less tight or just less jank mm -hmm. um PT, uh, if you've like, if you've got like a small shoulder injury, like getting ahead of it, um, if you like roll out, like if you can, uh, get like body work done, uh, you know, massages, uh, I think it all compounds if you don't do that. And if you don't take care of yourself, especially because in our society, we're not, we're like, we're, like a lot of times we'll go from zero to a hundred mm -hmm. and we don't have that like inner intermediate uh, like level of activity that kind of warms your body up. You know, mm. we get somewhere and we just start going where I think the human body isn't made to sit like this all day. And so you need to counteract that with these maintenance things um, uh, to to keep you sustainable both in the short term and the long term. Because I do want to do this for as long as possible. Um, and I think like, you know, a, maybe like one muscle being tight, if I just let that keep festering and festering, it's going to slowly pull on other muscles or get mm. too tight. And then in a few years, like I have another hip problem. Um, so I think, yeah, maintenance and also listening to, I think everyone says listening to your body, but I think it's important. No, it's very important. Yeah. All right. Last question. So if you were to be able to create something that tied in your day job 
and the things that you love, what will you create? Wow. Um, so I guess it would have to be some sort of, uh, tech related, uh, acrobatic thing. Um, um, I've actually, let's see, maybe like some sort of app or site that helps circus performers or stunt performers like either have visibility with each other and um, opportunities or just like helps bring the community closer or, or adds some sort of transparency to um, like a acrobat conditions uh, mm -hmm. because uh, I think a lot of like, unfortunately uh, acrobats don't get paid or treated as well as they should. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe having like some sort of tech based, you know, like some app or some software that can, can help streamline that process or or make things transparent could help with that oh that'd be cool yeah like a linkedin for acrobatics with yeah. like some good you know pointers slash job posts yeah maybe something like that uh yeah i think that'd be cool uh-huh well nicole thank you so much this is so much fun for me yeah i had a great time no i appreciate all the advice you gave out and uh, if people want to start following you on your journey, where can they find you? Oh, yeah, please do. Um, you can find me on Instagram at technical difficult dot difficulties. Uh, I'm sure you can. Great name. I can link that. I, okay. I read it. I was like, oh, that's a good Perfect. Yeah, name. it's, it's <laughs> T-E-C-H-N-I-C-O-L-E dot difficulties. Okay. Uh, find me there. I mean, feel free to email me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think people would just reach out to you on, on Instagram. Okay. Uh, yeah, anywhere... Yeah, yeah. Link to Instagram and from there you can message me, like my stuff. Cool. Whichever. Hey, thank you so much again. And thank you so much for trusting us, making your way to the clinic and, you know, trusting my team and I. Yeah. With, with oh, yeah. By the way, I found them online on YouTube uh, because I was looking for things to supplement my recovery process. And then I got in a rabbit hole of all your videos. And then I noticed that I could sign up for a an appointment and then i realized that you guys were in new jersey and i was going to be visiting new york for a few weeks and it all came together it all came together yeah that's no, great and they're awesome so yes check out our youtube channel we'll post that as well so thank you so much and hey we got we got some work to do before you go let's do it all right thank you <laughs>